Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Dan the Fix-It Man. Got another quick video here for you. I'm gonna show you how to change your front brake pads and your front rotor and also your front brake caliper on a 2001 Chevy Silverado. This is the uh, four-wheel drive model. This is a 1500 series truck and you should be able to see right here brake rotor is gone. The inside part of the disc is completely worn away and gone and what that's done is that's caused the caliper piston to completely pop out basically blow out the seals and and so it's leaking fluid all on the inside of the wheel well here and of course the wheel is covered as well so I'm going to show you how to change everything basically in the brake system up front and uh, bleed the brakes and get it back down the road before I pull the caliper off I'm actually going to go ahead and pull off this brake line and swap it over to the new brake caliper to not drain out the master cylinder completely the new caliper also comes with the caliper support bracket and it comes with these new bolts they've changed these out to an 18 millimeter bolt where the caliper bolts right here they actually are a Torx bit they require a T55 so I'm just gonna quickly separate this here uh, the new one by pulling out these 18 millimeter bolts zip them out here real quick these are the new well they're slide pin bolts it's kind of nice that they they do 18 millimeter because that's the same size that holds the bracket on the car. We'll just pull out those new slide pins. Just makes it a little bit easier to work with. So you can see they've also got new crush washers here. And we're gonna pull out this fitting. And so see, here's this piece. I've just got it ready to go in. So this will go through that, uh, that little square portion here. And then we'll put the other washer on and then we'll put it into the other caliper and I'll just set that caliper up above here out of the way before we pull this one off and get everything ready for it. But that way we don't sit there and drip out all of the fluid out of the master cylinder. And this is a 7 16ths or an 11 millimeter. I'm just using an 11. That's just what I have here handy. I'm just gonna crack that loose and then I'm gonna pull it out here quickly. Just let that, let the old bolt and everything drop out. If I can get it out. Yeah. It's trying to do this quickly. It'll not leak so much fluid everywhere, but... Well, it doesn't always go quickly. <laughs> this little crush washer is kind of stuck on there. And it's preventing this little bolt from pulling through. Okay, so not as quick and easy as I had hoped, but we can put the new bolt through there and get the other washer on. And then we'll just grab this caliper. And I'm just trying to get this bolt started here by hand. Okay, so that didn't go as easy as I had hoped. That crush washer kind of locked this that little, uh, the old bolt in place, the old through bolt. But now that I've got the new caliper portion on, I'm just gonna set it just up here up on top of the control arm. Just have it sitting up there so it's not gonna fall and yank on that brake line. And of course we made a little bit more of a mess than I had hoped here. So now we can pull off the old caliper and caliper bracket. Uh, you could probably do this all at once, but I'm just gonna try to pull these slide pins out and separate it. And this is easier, of course, if you turn the wheel uh, so that the caliper's outward. But we'll see if we can't pull these guys off here. These slide pins are kind of stuck in here. Oh my goodness. Okay, those are definitely in there really, really good. Probably from all the heat. Okay. Yeah, those are really stuck, really, really tight. But let's see if we can. My goodness. Nope. They're trying with a bigger breaker bar here. This T55 is just really, oh, there we go. That was really stuck in there. Okay, and then we'll just pull these out.
There's the old slide pin. Now the new caliper, of course, has got its own new slide pins, so we're not going to reuse those. There probably is a core charge here, so we'll just let that drain out all the old fluid and then bring it back. But there's your problem. So there's your brake pad, or what's left of it. Of course, that was just grinding on this rotor here. Uh, there's the outside pad. Still had, I guess, a little bit left. And then these little hardware pieces. The new kit comes with new ones. Or I, I usually call these the pad retainer clips or shims, but uh, we really don't need to save those. And then these bolts here, these are an 18 millimeter that hold the, uh, the caliper bracket on here. We just need to loosen and remove these. Uh, those are also very tight. Well, now that they're broken loose, I'm just gonna spin them off here. There's the old caliper bracket. I usually grab onto that so it doesn't fall, but not a big deal here. And we are replacing that. Now uh, these bolts, you can see they've got this yellow Loctite on there. Um, that's why they're, they're so stiff, but we're gonna reuse these. So I'll set those aside. Let's take a look at the old brake rotor here. Well, I guess the nice thing is it's a little bit lighter, easier to take off, but uh, yeah. There's your problem. I'm sure some of you have seen this uh, before. I've seen it a few times, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that's what's left of it. your inside the inside of the disc here. That's that's all that's left. And the rest of it's uh, completely gone. So yeah, that's why you don't ignore your brakes when you go metal to metal, or if it starts making some squealing and. Uh, Try to catch it before this happens. All right, now before we put the, the new rotor on, I just like to brush the hub a little bit. This one's actually really clean, believe it or not. And that rotor was not stuck on here or anything. But it's kind of nice just to have a, a nice clean surface there. I'm gonna hit the back side of this with some brake clean before I put it on. and then we'll wipe down the front too. Okay, now we can put on the new caliper bracket. Now this is new, it's got new grease in here in these boots. The boots are new, of course, as well. But we'll go ahead and just line that up, put in those bolts. Just gonna zip them on here real quick. We're going to torque these to 129 foot-pounds. Now we can put these guys on. Get them on the right way here. Whoops. So make sure you put the right one on the top. And then they should just snap into place like that. Yeah, the narrower, see the narrow side here goes on the outside. I had it flipped around. There we go. Just make sure that they're fully seated. Now these pads are unique. You've got on, on the outside pad, it looks like you've got a little noisemaker on, on the top and the bottom. And then on the inside pad, it's just going to be on the bottom. But before I put these pads in, just going to do a little bit of brake grease on the back here. This is uh, that Silglide stuff that I use. I'm also going to just put a little thin layer across this metal because you can see the, the metal here is, is going to ride there and kind of slide back and forth. Just, just don't use so much that it's going to you know gunk up on there and, and gather debris. But there's the inside. Same with the outside here. This stuff just really 
it seems to cut down on some of that noise, brake noise and squeal and chatter. And then we can just pop this pad in here. This one you kind of have to do a little bit different, almost at an angle to get it the, the main part in and then just, just line it up and it should go into place like that. And then we can grab the new caliper here, just line it up. Put it right over the caliper here. You can just kind of watch the boots. Tuck those back in. Go ahead and put in the new slide pins. You can see that they've already got some, some good clean grease on there. So I'm not going to bother with adding any. Zip those on real quick. That boot just kind of smashed down there a little bit. Same with this one here. There we go. Now that boot was just kind of caught on the lip of the slide pin here. But I've got it in place now. And then we can torque this to 74 foot-pounds. And then on our brake line bolt here, that should be 30 foot-pounds. There we go. Okay, so everything's back together. There's lots of ways that you can bleed the brakes. Uh, you can look at uh, lots of YouTube videos. Sometimes I'll, I'll have somebody helping me, pumping up the brakes and then opening this bleeder valve and then closing it before they lift their foot up to get all of the air out. Today, I don't have anyone here to help me, and I need to get this done. So, another method a lot of people will do is the gravity bleeding, where you just crack this open and just, just leave it open and just let the gravity uh, drop the brake fluid down until it starts to uh, come out there. I've got a little hose here I'm hooking up to a little, just a little bottle to catch the old brake fluid and I'm just going to prop that up there and I'm just going to show you something different that I have rigged up up here up top. So I've got a pressurized tank here and right now it's not pressurized so I'm just going to pump it up. Got a little gauge on the side. Um, I do have a video on how I made this and you can see right there took off the master cylinder cap and I've got this little rubber plumbing cap with this barb fitting. Uh, I've got a video on how I made this. I'll put a link in the description, but then just tighten this clamp so it doesn't pop off. So once that's pumped up, then we just go ahead and, and uh, squeeze this trigger right here. And you can see that that pushes brake fluid in there and we'll see how long it takes for it to come out down here. And you see we've got it pressurized and we just open that system until it's just clear fluid coming out. Pull off the hose and this comes with this little rubber cap. Just snap it on there, it keeps that nice and clean. Just give it a, another quick wipe down on the rotor, make sure that we don't have any brake fluid or anything on that. And you're done. Just remember to step on that brake pedal a few times just to make sure that everything is uh, pushed back out. Caliper pistons are pushed back out where they need to be up against the rotor. Other than that, you're, you're pretty much done. Just remember to torque everything to spec and uh, top off the master cylinder. Make sure the fluid is where it needs to be after you bleed the system. Hope you liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind, along with dinging that little bell next to the subscribe button. That does help me out and you'll get some notifications on when I post a new video. Of course, I'll put a link in the description where you can pick up these parts and some of these tools as well that I used in the video. Also, I'll put a link in the description to the video on how I made that pressure bleeder as well. But uh, thanks so much for watching and good luck.